Hello everyone and welcome to a really fun game, uh, it's from round one of this year's European Team Championship, it's uh, Anish Giri representing Netherlands and Badru Jobava representing uh, Georgia, uh, it's uh, really really a fun one and it really shows you what happens when uh, uh, you try and play really really aggressive against someone who is uh, incredibly strong um, uh, at chess and it's, uh, well uh, let's just uh, dive straight into it. So Anish with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have c6, Jobava goes for the Karo Khan defense, we have d4, d5, and e5 now, advancing the pawn, grabbing more space in the center, and now bishop to f5. So now uh, white has many good options here, you could uh, go for the immediate g4, which is very aggressive, probably something Jobava would play with the white pieces, but Anish goes for the more solid knight to f3, uh, the short variation, we have e6, and now bishop to e2, we have c5. Uh, we always have to waste this one tempo to uh, get more pressure on, on white center and of course the free are c6 square for the for the knight. So here bishop to e3, we have c captures on d4, knight captures and now yes our bishop is attacked but we don't care we just play knight to e7 and now uh, we actually invite white to capture on f5 uh, as if we get our own knight here this would be very good for us. Uh, so of course white will not do this, white just continues developing, we have castles, and now uh, there are some games that where a6 was played, also knight beat to c6 is a known move, but here we have knight to d7, and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game, and uh, Jobava has a most interesting setup here, you can see that the black king is completely boxed in, and regardless of what um, uh, black does for the next 3 moves, you will not be able to castle, so it does make sense to start something, it, maybe something like c4, this would attack the center, but also uh, maybe even g4, the move Anish plays. So let's see uh, what happens here. The bishop is attacked, we have bishop back to g6, and now f4, uh, preparing f5. And the interesting thing about uh, f5 is that it traps the, the bishop here, uh, as even if uh, we capture g captures on f5, both the queen and the bishop guard the h5 square. So you're not going to be able to uh, break free here. And the, the, the question is, why would not black play h5? You have to play it to, to make some room for your bishop. For example, you play h5, and now everything is fine. G captures on h5, now you can play knight to f5. You don't care about this because white's bishop on e3 is hanging. And if white moves the bishop back, for example, bishop to f2, you can go bishop to h7. Uh, the game continues and uh, it would seem that Jobava got exactly what he would enjoy uh, from uh, a game against uh, Anisha. Really, really crazy position where, you know, uh, there are countless possibilities. Uh, it's, it's, it's an open position, you know, anything can be pushed, anything can be played definitely something that he would enjoy but he instead played knight to c6 and he invites Anish to push this pawn to f5 uh, and trap his bishop now uh, you could push it right away you could first eliminate one of the pieces and then push f5 definitely uh, eliminating one of the knights first and then pushing f5 makes more sense as you have opened up your king a little bit uh, so you want to remove as many attackers from the board as possible so knight captures on c6 was played b captures and now f5 and the bishop is now uh, gone you you can't save this piece and now what do you play here with black well there are a couple of very interesting options for example knight captures on e5 is interesting if f captures uh, we're going to play h captures we open up this uh, h file for the rook and now after rook f2 adding uh, a little bit more defense to the second rank maybe queen c7 then bishop to d6 then rook to b8 this would be an interesting setup for black and uh, yes black is down a piece but um uh, you know, uh, for someone uh, of uh, of uh, Jobava style, that, that can definitely be considered compensation. So instead, we have queen to b8, putting more pressure on e5 and also uh, attacking that b2 pawn with the queen. Uh, but now we have f captures and g6, h captures and the bishop to f4, adding more defense to the e5 pawn. And now, yes, you could capture with the knight, but then the knight will be pinned on e5. And if you go for something like uh, queen captures on, uh, on b2 right away, it does doesn't really do all that much. We're going to play knight to d2 and still it's perfectly fine. The rook is now nicely defended and uh, if you play knight captures um, uh, on e5 now, uh, th th you don't really have uh, any, any threats here with black. You can simply play king to g2, get the king to a little bit of a safer square and the game continues. So not much, uh, not much happening here. Uh, instead, after this bishop to f4 move, uh, we have bishop to c5 with check. 
Uh, now you could also consider just grabbing the pawn right away, but it does uh, make sense to get one uh, more attacker into the game first. So bishop c5 check, we have king to g2, and now knight captures on e5. So a little bit of a different approach, uh, but for the moment this knight cannot move. The queen uh, is, is on b8, so here we have knight to c3, and now g5, trying to get this bishop away uh, uh, from keeping this pin on the knight, so bishop to g3, maintaining the pin, and now f6. Now the knight is nicely defended, and the black queen can move from here, uh, because you really have to do something. Your uh, rook on a8 isn't really doing anything, there's not much you can do with the rook on h8, now that the bishop is nicely guarding that h2 pawn. So here, knight to a4, attacking, uh, defending the b2 pawn, also attacking the bishop here, and the bishop back to d6. And although... Uh, this seems to be like a very impressive setup for black. Uh, there doesn't seem to be all that much you could do, you, you can do with it. So maybe bishop to e3 uh, was worth um, uh, considering, uh, you know, maybe bishop to f4. And then at least we can take the, the bishop off the board. If queen e1, preparing queen to c3, let's say bishop f4, queen c3. And we're, okay, the pawn here is being pressured, so we can play queen to d6. The, the game continues, so it's uh, uh, definitely... Uh, a, a very complicated position, but maybe one that uh, Jobava would enjoy. Uh, instead, bishop to d6 was played, but now it's much different. There is no tension between the bishops, so uh, what do you do here? Like I said, uh, there is no way for this rook for, to enter the game for the moment. The queen isn't really doing all that much. It's really just stuck here guarding that bishop on d6. If the knight moves, you don't want to blunder a piece. Uh, the rook re uh, also not that powerful. The bishop here just uh, uh, controls everything. Guards h2, uh, pin this knight and you know just puts all this pressure along this diagonal so what's left for Anish to do well c4 uh, we attack the center we want to play rook to c1 queen to c2 open up the c file and it seems like uh, uh, th that's the way to go black doesn't really have all that much to do so king to e7 now preparing to shift uh, all the power to the to the king side we have queen to c2 and now rook to h6 preparing to double up on the h file uh, rook a to c1 uh, preparing to capture here and just queen to h8 putting more pressure but uh, this bishop is just just a monster it's it's doing all the work uh you know you don't really need any of the other pieces uh to defend the white king this bishop is doing all the work so here we have c captures on d5 anish can just focus on uh on other tasks we have c captures on d5 and rook to f3 now a beautiful move by anish uh, showing that uh, the rook, of course, cannot be captured. If you capture the rook, bishop captures on d6, just wins on the spot. If the bishop is captured, we can play queen to c7 checkmate. But even if it's not, if you play king f7, uh, doesn't matter. Queen to c7 check, king to g8, and now even bishop captures on f3. Perfectly, perfectly fine, the uh, h2 pawn is still uh, nicely defended, and black has nothing here. So instead, after rook to f3, we have rook to d8, adding a defender to the... Uh, bishop here and also uh, rook to d7 can be played to help out with the defense along the seventh rank. So rook to b3, preparing rook to b7, and now rook to d7. Uh, of course, stopping this, but this allows the white queen to infiltrate the back rank. So queen to c8. Uh, now attacking the black queen here, and there's really nothing more for black to uh, hope for here. Uh, you could start by pushing f5, maybe try and do some damage here, but it doesn't matter. Just captures, captures, and now we can trade. Queen captures, rook captures, play h3, and we, uh, black still has no compensation for uh, for the sacrificed piece. It's an easy win for white. So instead, queen to h7 was played. Uh, Jobava has to keep the queens on the board. Maybe queen to e4 check can, uh, can stir some trouble, but now comes knight to c5 attacking the rook here and uh, interestingly you cannot play rook to c7 uh, because you get checkmate the e6 pawn is now weak uh, so just check uh, for example king to uh, d8 rook to b8 check you can block here and then this would be checkmate so the bishop uh, has to capture the knight we have bishop captures on c5 now comes queen captures on c5 with check king to f7 and now queen uh, back to c8 uh, saying okay i'm not worried about queen d4 check i will allow it but that's really uh, all there is to the position so queen e4 check, bishop to f3, you can even play this, uh, and now 
Quinta d4. Uh, you can never capture here uh, because the knight is needed here defending the rook on d7. So Quinta d4 was played going for some Quinta d2 check, uh, but now bishop captures on e5. We just remove the defender of the of the rook here. Quinta d2 check. We have king to g1. Uh, this was uh, one last attempt for uh, for uh, Anish to blunder the game. Maybe if king to g2, then we can play queen captures on h2 with checkmate. But Anish, of course, played king to g1, and it was in this position on move 31 that Badur Jobaba resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so really, a nice one. Uh, well, it's you know, uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, you're down too much material, and you do not have an attack. This bishop still doing incredible work here, just. Um uh, defend, uh, defending that h2 pawn and of course if you capture the bishop uh, then your rook falls uh, with check so queen captures on d7 and once the king moves we can simply go for some like rook here check or rook to c8 with check king h7 even bishop to e4 check uh, is an option because now if pawn captures then the queen on d2 falls and you don't have uh, anything here if, if rook to g6 just rook to h3 is checkmate so there is no no playing this and of course uh, Jobama knows this and after king to g1 he resigned the game but it really is um, a crazy position and it really shows you just what a uh, what a what a crazy attacker Jabawa is you know he just goes all out uh, every game and uh, you know especially against someone as strong as Anish to you know sacrifice a piece like this and this is uh, this wasn't even like uh, I mean uh, look at this he played this uh uh, knight to c6 move this is move 10 so on move 10 you already uh you know say you know yes uh feel free to, to trap my piece and it, it doesn't even seem like it's black who's attacking it it does seem like it's white who's attacking here so it's a really really an impressive sacrifice maybe he went wrong somewhere maybe it was uh you know prepared at home maybe with absolute best play white cannot claim any winning advantage uh but still you know it requires um uh, perfect or, or maybe close to perfect play uh, but yeah, really, really uh, interesting, and it it really shows you what uh, what happens when you you know uh, sacrifice some material you know without uh, any real or sufficient compensation against uh, someone as strong as Anish. Uh, he just you know completely obliterates you, and it's uh, you know well, well we were discussing in the previous video how Tal often uh, you know had success against uh, almost everyone uh, except uh, Paul Keres. Uh, well, that's uh, what happened when you sacrifice the Keres. He happily accepted your sacrifice, and then he just said. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to that's not going to work. Uh, but yeah, OK, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Derek King. I hope you had a great day filled with, uh, you know, much chess and joy. And I would like to thank uh, Koshal Chapia, uh, Samuel Kamui, David Kimura and the Dog Fox for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage um, uh, of uh, this wonderful event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else is happening in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.